from Cambridge High School's McFarland Stadium, it's Monroe Central football playoff style. Tonight the Seminoles will take on the Burn Union Rockets. Both teams with 9-1 and one records and a lot of similarities in the style. And Dale, another great night for football. Oh, you can't ask for anything nicer than this. You know, this is a beautiful place to play. Last year we were here, we had some rain. It was a little bit rugged. Uh, we were inside tonight. It's so nice. We're up on top. We're going to have a great view, a great picture for everybody. And this is tremendous football, Coach. Just tremendous. I guess the question a lot of people ask is how will the Seminoles get back up this week and get ready to play emotionally? after last week's disappointment but really I guess one word kind of sums everything up there and that's playoffs. Playoffs. I don't think that'll be a problem. I think uh, Coach DaCosta and, and his crew do a wonderful job with the boys getting them ready and I have no doubt that they will be ready. I think it's important that they get out of the uh, the stance quick tonight you know and establish some things but yet you know I have all the confidence in the world in uh, the young Seminoles and their ability so I'm looking for a great evening and I'm looking for uh, more opportunities to play in other stadiums just like this. Uh, I wanted to take a little time tonight, Coach, and uh, be on the field with you because there are a lot of people who make these kind of things possible. You know, I want to especially thank you and Greg and Lance, you know, who do the talking and so on, you know, got me off of the, uh, the microphone a little bit. That helps out a lot. You know, we have Brian Easterling behind the camera tonight. You know, I've, I've uh, had Brian doing camera, and I've done some of that, and he does a great job. Uh, Coach Sacosta, you can't say enough, you know, he comes in every week and, and does the Coach's Corner Show and spends long hours getting ready. This year, uh, Jerry Calder came in and did a tremendous job. You know, there are just so many people, and the advertising, you know, you can't say enough for the advertisers who put out their money and who want football available for the young kids. And the kids do enjoy it, you know, that's what it's all about. We do this for the kids, and, and we spend a lot of hours doing it. I think a lot of people look forward to the replays on Saturday. A lot of people are at the game, you know, look forward to, to seeing some things maybe they missed at the game. And a lot of people are not able to make the trip, look forward to being able to, to, to see actually what did take place. And I, I think I can speak for Greg when I say, you know, we're just glad to have the opportunity to, to sit around, stand around, and talk about football. And, uh, you know, I know Greg makes it easy for me. Well, you both do a great job. You know, Lance, Lance helped us early in the year, and, you know, Lance did such a great job. And Greg coming on, and uh, you doing a great job. You know, that's what makes it all worthwhile, and that's what makes it fun. And Greg will be here in just a little bit, and we're ready for football, Coach. As you said, somebody plays next Friday night, and somebody starts basketball and wrestling practice next right. week. You know, so we're looking forward to being somewhere next Friday night. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with the opening kickoff. Maybe you already knew that Woodsfield Ashland has 100% pure gasoline along with kerosene and diesel fuel and about their drive through where you can pick up your favorite snacks, slushes, legal beverages, or pop. You probably know about Kirk's Ice Cream available in 16 flavors. It's guaranteed to bring a smile to your face. But did you know that Woodsfield Ashland sells great pizza? Just call ahead at 472-1745 to order your pizza for before or after the game. And don't forget their drive through service open Monday through Saturday 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. and Sunday 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Let Swiss Lands Realty help you find what you need in a home, commercial property, or just land. Free gas, county water, a pole barn, two rentals, a house, and a mobile home, along with an eight-room remodeled farmhouse. Five big garage with two rooms, an office, and a bath make this property a great buy. Located on 172 acres in Center Township. Located on three acres in the middle of Woodsfield, this house has five bedrooms, three baths, a formal dining room, family room, and a rec room. An ideal place for a growing family. Let Swiss Lanes really help you with all of your real estate needs. 472-0614. It's time to stop by Woodsfield Savings and Loan. We offer a variety of rates and terms to suit your home mortgage needs. Our low rates make owning your own home affordable, and the Woodsfield Savings and Loan is an equal housing lender. Open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 9 to 3, Thursday and Saturday, 9 to 12, and Friday, 9 to 6. We pride ourselves in serving you quickly and efficiently. When it's time for a home mortgage or financial service, call us at Woodsfield Savings and Loan Company. Janet Kelly and Lisa, JKL Substation, invite you to try sub salad, sundaes, and shakes in an old-fashioned ice cream parlor and atmosphere. Enjoy Hershey's hand-packed ice cream. Save time. Phone ahead at 472-5224 to have your lunch ready when you need it. The same great subs and soups plus additional seating, lower prices, and extended hours, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. through the fall. For lunch, supper, or after the game, come to JKL Substation. Meet your friends, have great food, and a good time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll keep, you know, like, right about The first thing is the dog is loose and I'm just grabbing right now. I'll keep that right there. We're back with you from Cambridge High School as the Seminoles take the field. Craig, we mentioned in the opening, you know, two teams of very similar styles. You know, both, you know, some good size on the line. Burn Union, basically a running team. And earlier we talked down the field, you know, as a player, you know, what's it take for these young men to get back up emotionally to play after the disappointment of last week? I think that's exactly what it is, Jeff. The disappointment of last week's loss to Bellsville uh, pretty much had these guys down as, as a team. And uh, I've been talking all week, people here and there, and this may be a blessing in disguise as far as the Bellsville loss, and you hate to say that, but... That was the Burn Union marching band with our national anthem. And during a fine pregame show, we bring back memories for some of the old Ohio University alums like myself with a couple of old OU standards. But before the national anthem, Greg, you were saying about getting up emotionally, you know, after last week. Well, like I was saying, the loss may be a blessing in disguise for a team that, you know, had some tough games, but had some games in there where we talked earlier in the season, they only played a quarter and a half to two quarters uh, coming into Bellsville game maybe down a little bit but you know it's going to be definitely a help for them coming into the night facing this team all right the coin toss out in the middle of the field Burn Union has won the toss and deferred so the Seminoles will be receiving the opening kickoff we see channel nine's Don Sloan down front getting the crowd fired up with his Monroe Seminoles Monroe Central Seminole t-shirt on, and he's uh, he's becoming the cheerleader. Maybe he's auditioning for one of the Kellis Crazies positions. He's definitely a character. I wonder if he's eligible for that award. <laughs> uh, just a couple of players for Burn Union you might want to keep an eye on. Their leading runner, Vic Worthman, will be number 44. He has 1,136 yards rushing for the year, and the other running back, Mike Muncy, will wear number 21. Their quarterback is number four, Ron Rowley. And he's just a junior. And they say he'll wear number four. The Rockets from Burn Union, winners of eight in a row. They lost their second game of the year, 28-26, to Amanda Clear Creek, who is 10-0 in Division Four and also participating in the playoffs this week. And that also last year the team that beat River first round of the playoff, Amanda Clear Creek. That's correct. So as we prepare for the kickoff, as usual, number 20, Dustin Robinson, along with number 34, Will Weddle, and number 33, Eric Kramer, deep. Burn Union will tee it up with number 35. who is not listed on the program. So he'll be preparing to kick off. 
and we're ready to go. I look around the big crowd. I see Bellsville, Shenandoah, Carwell, Barnesville, and Waterford people represented here this evening. And I'm sure there are many others. As we wait for the officials to get in position, um, see the head referee still over here talking to Coach Lacoste on the sideline. So we've got a, a brief delay while the officials get ready for this kickoff. Well, we've said everything there is to say. I think to come in here, we'll wait for people to get ready. So, anything else that you want to add? <laughs> well, like you said, we'll just see what happens. The talking, talking's over with. It's time to play football. People that are not aware, and I think most everyone around town is aware of the fact that Bellsville will be playing on Saturday evening at Athens High School. And I see, as I said earlier, a large number of Bellsville people here, just as I'm sure there'll be a large number of Monroe Central people make the trip to Athens to watch the Blue Devils next week. I think you see that that the teams you know, now root for each other, and it'd be great for Monroe County to go a long way in both divisions of the playoffs. All right, the officials appear to be ready. We have the whistle, and the kickoff is just moments away. The kick is very high, not particularly deep. Robinson will take it on the 13-yard line. He'll head left. Break up the middle. He'll be across the 30, about the 34-yard line. All year long, special teams have been a key to field position. There again showed Dustin Waite hesitated for a split second to set up his wall and had a nice return out to the 35-yard line. Before we get started here, I might mention the offensive line. Center, number 51, Ben Klein. Guards, number 78, Jeremy Kramer. Number 66, uh, Buller. The tackles, number 76, Yoho. And number 71, Young. The ends, number 45, Hughes. Number 82, Wilson. Quarterback is number 7, Joe Kress. And the first play, he'll toss to Robinson. He'll get it across the 35. To about the 37. Pick up about three yards. Kind of a surprise on first play of the game there. A uh, little lead lead toss to the near side here. Uh, like you said, gain about two yard line. Let's, let's see what happens this next few plays here. We see number 88 Laser in with the play replacing Hughes. Uh, Cress and Robinson joined in the backfield by Shoemaker number 44 and Weddle number 34. They give it to Shoemaker. He'll try to bounce it outside and have a hard time getting out there. He's brought down by number 21, Mike Muncy. And the gain will be only about a yard. That'll bring up a third and seven. Monroe Central will send two receivers to the left. Cress on quick out to Robinson. He'll get upfield behind a block of Hughes, and we get a flag. It is good for the first down. But uh, there's a flag thrown right in the area of the block, and uh, I believe that's going to come back for a holding penalty. And that is the case. And that play there was a hitch to Dustin on the inside of the slot on the far side of the field. Um, I believe it was Dustin Hughes, the lead blocker. When he went to block the guy, the guy obviously tried to get away from him, and I couldn't tell from up here, but obviously the referee said he grabbed a hold of him when Dustin went by. So that will offset a big gain. The penalty is 10 yards from the point of the foul. We'll bring it back to the 36-yard line, where it will be third down and about seven or eight yards once again. But again, a big play negated by a penalty. Some movement in the line. Crest the throw. He'll now scramble. And he'll get the first down across the 45-yard line before being pulled down by number 30, Jason Lefevre. The fine job there by Joe Crest. Not able to find a receiver. Use his speed and get the first down. Couldn't tell if that was really a design draw, but the way he dropped back and took off, it it looked like a draw play right off the get-go. So the initial first down of the game, Seminoles out, wishbone formation. 
We give it to the second back, Robinson. And looked like he broke through, but one of the defenders had a hold of his arm or maybe also had a hold of the ball. And that's a pretty good job by Dustin to not let the defender strip that ball away from him. Yeah, like being in the middle of the line like that, and you say you talk about Dustin's size all the time, it really doesn't mean anything. But uh, for his size compared to some of the defenders, he needs to hang on to the ball. Last scrimmage will be about the 47-yard line. Once again, we see Leisure and, and Hughes alternating with the plays in the early going. A wing formation to the left. Fake the Weddle. Crest back. Has time. Now he's going to run, and now he'll throw to Leisure inside the 40. About the 39-yard line. Good for the first down. Joe made a nice little play there by using the wide side of the field and rolling to his right towards his throwing arm. Look, look, look. Keith Lazier found a little spot in the seam. First down. And what a tremendous job of the offensive line to give Joe enough time to deliver that ball in there as Joe started to run and then picked up his receiver, Lazier. Here's the option to the left. Crest will keep and be pulled down near the line of scrimmage. Looked like number 21 once again, Muncie. Give Cress about a yard to the 38-yard line. Out once again, the slot formation to the right. Laser split wide right. Weddell in the slot. They run the option to the right, and again, Joe tuck it under and get only a couple of yards brought down once again by number 21, Muncie. Burn Union's defending that option pretty well. Uh, they have at least three guys to the side of the option every time. One guy on the quarterback, one guy on the pitch, man, and a guy kind of floating in between. Going to make it tough to run the option tonight. See number 71, J.R. Young limping to the sideline there, and replaced by number 77, Demerling. Hopefully that's nothing serious. And we get JR back in there after a play or two. Third and seven. Crest fakes to Robinson, drops back. He's under a lot of heat. And he's going to be brought down. He's able to get rid of the ball. And I guess he wasn't down when he pitched the ball forward there to... That's number 66, Booer. That's who I thought it was. It was that Booer? Jamie Booer is what I saw. I'm like, is that legal? The third forward to the lineman? That's <laughs> me. I see no flags. If, it may be as, if it's behind the line of scrimmage. That's true. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a, a large loss on the play, bringing up a punting situation. Hughes will punt one set back for Burn Union. And the ball is off the side a little bit, and it's going to roll down inside the 15 about the 14-yard line where Jeremy Kramer will down the ball. So the Burn Union Rockets' first possession will be deep in their own territory. Six minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the first period. All right, here's the big test. High-powered running game against a stingy defense, at least through the year they were. We'll see what happens. It'll be necessary for the defense to rise to the occasion once again. Uh, you know, never surrendering more than eight points in a game all year. Looks like Yoho and Baker will man the tackle positions while Young is still on the sidelines. They'll give to their big back, number 44, Worthman. He'll be across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Looks like Kramer may have been on the, and on the tackle. But about a six-yard pickup for a Worthman on first down. I think we'll see plenty of number 44 by Burn Union this evening. He'll get the ball once again off the right side where he'll be hit near the line of scrimmage. He may lose a yard. Looked like Eric Hamilton was able to hit the legs and bring him down. Time and time again, Eric Hamilton 
Shooting that gap to the right or left of the center. Chasing the play down from behind made another nice play. That's where the speed of that middle guard really comes in handy. When you can get in a gap like that and pursue a good running back and bring him down from behind, he's not really thinking about being hit from behind. So third and four for the Rockets. Again, they have a wide receiver. They'll give the ball to their fullback, and he'll be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Shoemaker in on the play along with Wilson. And three plays and out for Burn Union and a punting situation. We talked there last week, Luke from his linebacker position. And uh, Belzer ran maybe not that exact little trap play, but like a little counter to the backside. Luke from his opposite linebacker position made the play again. Number five, Kenny Hurst will be in punt formation for Burn Union, while Robinson and Weddle will be deep on about their own 40-yard line. Burn Union kind of spread out in their alignment with some pressure and well nearly blocked by Kramer. It's a short kick out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Over around the 35-yard line. So Monroe Central will put the ball in play at the 35-yard line. Only about a 15-yard punt. So the first break of the game goes to Monroe Central. Four minutes, 29 seconds remaining in the first period. A break such as that, very important to take advantage of that. You know, a big swing and field position in the opening exchange of punts. Robinson, big hole. He's got the first down inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. Go along with what you said just a minute ago, Jeff, as far as field position. You know, starting on oh, about the 37-yard line, points coming out of this would definitely be crucial towards the end of the game here. Big hole in that left side. That would be Yoho and uh, Kramer on the left side. And uh, I'm not sure what formation was in, but possibly Hughes, you know, if he was uh, tight end uh, at that time. But a first down at about the 22-yard line. I see J.R. Young is back in the game. So we'll get a wing formation to the left and get motion by Robinson to the near side and pitch to Shoemaker. He'll get across the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Um, didn't get a lot of help from his blockers right there, but uh, still able to get forward for about three yards. They'll put him down on the 19-yard line. Number, number five, Hurst. And on the tackle. Good pursuit like we saw one on about the option. Uh, they play well laterally and a play that takes that long to develop, they're able to pick up, but something a little quicker, maybe have a little more luck with. Right, as you say, pretty good pursuit and the early going by Burn Union. So it'd be second and seven from the 19 yard line. And Robinson, and not much going there by Dustin. He may get a couple of yards just inside the 18. And I was going to mention there that to play before number five, Hurst, and on the tackle for Burn Union, according to, to the one of uh, the papers, that he'd been credited with 11 pass interceptions from his defensive back position. And that's just a phenomenal number for one individual to have 11 interceptions in a 10-game season. So we'll see if the passing game may get away from him during the evening. Third and six. They'll pitch to Robinson left side. They'll sneak through a hole and get to about the 13-yard line. And I believe it's going to be just short of, the, of a first down by about a yard and a half. And that brings up the first decision of the game, Greg. Well, you know, early in the game, they always call it the red zone in high school or down territory. Okay. Coach Costa will spend a timeout. So we'll step aside for a moment. We'll be right back. West Court Hair Fashions, new in name, but the same in advanced high-tech hair care products and services. West Court is staffed with 10 highly qualified technicians to serve their clients' different needs. Products sold only in the finest salons include Nexus, Paul Mitchell, Bricado, each with a money-back guarantee. To keep that healthy look all year round, two wolf tanning beds along with the best tanning and skin care products. Call 472-5350 today to get a new you and a new name, West Court Hair Fashions. 
At Respects Food Mart, we're proud of all we do. From our humble beginning in Woodsfield in 1929, we've grown into six stores in the Ohio Valley. We strive to combine that small town friendliness with the buying power of the chain store to give you, our friends and customers, the best of both worlds. And we take pride in our community, its people, and their accomplishments. We're proud to support all county schools, and we'd like to congratulate the Monroe Central Seminoles and wish them the best of luck in the playoffs. We're proud of all we do at Respects Food Mart, and Seminoles, we're proud of you. All right, Greg, we're back after that timeout by Monroe Central. Coach Sarkasta has made his decision, and that is <laughs> going to go for it. Fourth down, about a yard and a half. And that will be Robinson on a straight dive, and he appears to have the first down. For a minute there, I thought all the second guessers from last week was maybe would have a chance to second guess again, but I'm sure everybody here now says since that was a successful play, well, that was a great call. Well, I think I think it was a good call, you know, work or not. Uh, probably keying on Luke a little more, run that quick little dive with a power formation to the left side. As you said earlier, the quick hitters have been a little bit uh, more effective. So it is a first down near the 10-yard line. They give it to Shoemaker. He'll step away from a couple tackles. He'll get down to near the five-yard line. Luke's made a lot of yards on that play the last couple years. Um, it's effective. You may see it a few more times before this night's over. Last scrimmage will be the five. It uh, appears that it is possible for the Seminoles to get a first down at about the one-yard line. So it's second and four from the five-yard line. Again, a wing formation with Weddle, the wingman to the right. And they'll give it to Robinson right side. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and keep driving forward for about a yard. He's at about the four-yard line. Now be a third down and about three. There was a hole there for a split second, and it just it closed fast. But I thought Dustin had it in there for a minute. If you don't get in here on third down, then that you know, sets up another decision. But as uh, you know, as you said earlier, you know the defense has been doing a great job. So I think you go for it if you don't get in. But let's get in here. It's Shoemaker, the fake pitch to Robinson, and he'll get in to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Monroe Central. Beautiful fake that time by John Luke. About five guys hit Luke when he went through the line of scrimmage. Justin was out here all by himself. Beat the guy in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. When you have a man score 17 touchdowns like Luke has this year, I'm sure the whole defense was ready for that. Thinking Shoemaker would get the ball. They honored the play fake and run the option. Crest made a good decision to Robinson. And six points. Now shift over. And we'll get the extra point attempt. Again, Ludwig the holder, Kramer the snapper, a little bit high, it's down, and no good. The kick is wide to the right. But with 40 seconds remaining in the first period, Monroe Central on the board first. It's the Seminole 6, Burn Union nothing. We'll be right back with the kickoff. For almost any size job, the area's most extensive fastener display is at Aiken Hardware. Small engine belts in all sizes, too. And it's that time of the year for Oregon chains and bars and, of course, hunting licenses, shells, and accessories. Home improvements are easy with the large inventory of electrical and plumbing supplies and standard bathroom fixtures. A full line of kitchen and laundry appliances are always in stock. Custom paints for interior and exterior for all fix-ups. Special services, screen repair, and glass cutting. Car wax and car care products, bikes of all kinds, and just arrived vent-free and kerosene heaters. Eggers, much more than a hardware store. Okay, we're back for the kickoff after the missed extra point. 40.9 seconds remaining in the first period. Crest will kick off. But the importance of getting on the board first in any game, but especially this type of game, get on the board and let your defense go to work. Okay, Crest ready to kick off. Uh, Muncie and Worthman, I believe, are the deep backs for Burn Union. Kick over to the right side. One of the up backs will take it about the 20-yard line. Try to get to the middle of the field. Eric Kramer. 
Eric Kramer broke through, untouched, made the play at about the 23 yard line. It was a nice play by Eric that time. Again, you said he was untouched, had a beat on him, drug him down from behind. We, we say almost every week that any time you can get down a high school ball and make the stop inside the 30-yard line, you have done a great job. So uh, that's the case right there. Eric Down made the play. Burn Union puts the ball in play at their own 24-yard line. This could be the final play of the first period. And they'll give the ball to Worthman. He'll try to get outside. Sidestep one tackler and be brought down by Robinson at about the 32-yard line after a pickup of about eight yards. And that will take us to the end of the first period. So after one period of play, Monroe Central 6, Burn Union nothing. We'll be right back with the second period. In the 1990s, it's nice to know there's still someone who makes decisions according to people and not just money. At Loveday Motors, customer satisfaction is number one. Whether it's a new or used car or truck that you're shopping for or parts and service, come to Loveday's. Your friends and neighbors are working here. For your convenience and peace of mind, now's a great time to purchase a car from. Loveday's is your ICN headquarters. Ask about discounts available to Chamber of Commerce members. With factory trained technicians, the latest high-tech tools and equipment, and genuine GM parts, why go anywhere else? Loveday Motor Sales. Autumn's here and the holiday season is right around the corner. Treat yourself to a new haircut, hair color, or perm at Rita's Beauty Shop and be ready for all those holiday parties. Open six days a week and evenings by appointment. For your convenience, walk-ins are welcome. Gift certificates are available for services and products for holidays or year-round gift giving. For holiday hair care, call Rita's Beauty Shop today at 472-0964 and treat yourself. All right, we're back at the start of the second period. Burn Union second down and about two from their own 32-yard line. Eye formation they'll give to the big tailback, and he'll break through and has a lot of running room, and Robinson has a hold of him. will bring him down across midfield at about the 37-yard line. Right up the gut again. Uh, he got a nice little block from his guard straight out ahead. See how the linebackers off, and there was nobody... Behind. So Burn Union asserting their self offensively and saying that first series was a fluke and they're going to try to answer the early Monroe Central score. So a couple big runs there and I say he is their bread and butter with over 1,100 yards. And he'll get the carry once again and again a huge hole and Kramer will make the tackle but it's not before Worthman will cross the 30 to about the 28 yard line and about eight yards. And eight yards of crack is definitely too much for the defense to be giving up. Yeah. They'll get it to Worthman again. Shoemaker shoots a gap, made contact in the backfield. The play will be finished off by Kramer and Young. And very close to the first down. Justin Hughes also in on the tackle. It'll be short of the first down, but the play was kind of disrupted by Shoemaker breaking through there and making contact in the backfield. That play is definitely going to be seen a lot tonight. We'll see how the defense reacts and what kind of adjustments they make. And Coach Singleton has showed a willingness to take gambles with his linebackers at different times this year. And if you guess right, you make the big play. If not, you get hurt. On third down, Worthman off the left side once again. Not much running room, but he'll get to cross the 25 and will get the first down. Uh, again, Young and Hughes, uh, Kramer making the play, but the offensive line for Burn Union getting a little bit of a surge there and knocking some people out of there and getting some nice yardage. The ball will be on about the 23 yard line for Burn Union. And Worthman will get the ball again on the pitch, this time to the right, and he'll break through across the 20. Shoemaker on the tackle along with probably Hamilton, it looks like, on the play. But again, a first down carry of about seven yards for the big tailback, Worthman. See, they made an adjustment there. Brought Jamie Booer in at defensive end, new Jeremy Kramer, linebacker, something we saw earlier in the season. 
Uh, maybe trying to mix it up a little bit. The second and two, Worthman gets the ball once again, and he's going to break a tackle and spread to the corner and be knocked out of bounds by Cress at about the one yard line. Again, it's just a simple playoff tackle. We're getting beat off the ball. They list Worthman at 5'11", 190, but you know, he looks a little bit bigger. Yes, he does. And I think he's carried the ball on every play. But Cress was able to get him out of bounds. And about the one yard line, the ball resting just inside the one. First down and goal. Little unbalanced look to the left, and they'll send Worthman in there. And he'll be hit in the backfield by Kramer and stop short of the goal line. Nice defensive play by Kramer. Like I said earlier, he's a linebacker now. Got a little more room to move back here. Made a nice play in the backfield. So give, give the ball carrier to Worthman. No gain on the play. Again, the ball resting just about the one yard line, just inside the one. Burn Union comes out in a formation like that, and it's very really easy to tell where they're going to run the play. It's just a matter of stopping it. Again, they'll come with a strong formation, and they'll go back to the weaker side. And Worthman once again, and he'll be in the end zone for a touchdown. And we're tied at six. Extra point upcoming. Every play of the drive was the tailback. Yeah, about seven or eight. Yes, it was. Seven or eight plays. And a metal huddle alignment for Burn Union over to the right. They'll now shift to the line of scrimmage. And we'll get the extra point upcoming. And the snap is good. And the kick looks pretty good. And it is good. So Burn Union retaliates with a touchdown of their own. Eight minutes, 48 seconds remaining in the second period. Burn Union seven, Monroe Central six. We'll be right back. Joan and Steve of Weber's Pharmacy were born and raised in our area and care about you and your family. Over the years, they've served our community with after-hours emergency service, quality products, competitive prices, friendly staff, and that special hometown touch. With that same spirit of hometown pride, John and Steve wish to congratulate Coach Sacosta and the Monroe Central Seminoles on a great season. Remember Weber's Pharmacy for all your health care needs. You're not just a member of Weber's Pharmacy, you're part of the family. We're back ready for the kickoff. 7 6 Burn Union. Nothing fancy on that long drive by Burn Union, about 77 yards. You know, tailback right, tailback left, tailback up the middle, and the result a touchdown. I think you're going to see at a good bit tonight. And the kickoff by number 25. We have a whistle stopping play. Number 25's name is David Fish. And I'm not sure if that's a young man that kicked the extra point or not. I imagine it is. David Fish, number 25. But the whistle stops the play, and we'll get a re-kick. The no central called for being offside. You know, you see more often than not the kicking team offside, and it somebody across, makes you wonder. Somebody across that front line must have stepped across the 50-yard line prior to the ball being kicked. And I'm not real sure, um, you know, coach asking for an explanation, and I don't believe getting one that he was satisfied with. But nevertheless, a five-yard penalty will move the kickoff up to the 45-yard line. And we'll try it again. As you say, you, uh, normally you'll see the, uh, someone on the kicking team offside. The kick very high. Robinson will take it on about his own 10-yard line. He'll get up the middle and get out near the 30. And they will put him right on the 30-yard line, I believe, where Minot Central will take over and for their third possession of the game. 
First and ten, now trailing by a point. Slot formation to the left. Robinson gets the carry, and he'll break through a hole in the middle and get across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. Again, a fine hole by the offensive line. They tried that play last week a lot and didn't seem to have very much success. They obviously seen something against this defense, maybe bigger and a tad slower than Belzo last week, and they're able to run that. I know the coaches felt that Burn Union possessed a real good size along the front line, but they did not think that they were particularly quick. And it, you know, our people thought that they were a little bit quicker. So hopefully that'll happen. A little mix up in the backfield, I believe. Uh, Looked like somebody may have went the wrong way. Uh, Robinson was awfully deep when he received the ball and was going to lose yardage back to the 35-yard line and about a four-yard loss, and it'll be third and five. Could you tell what happened there? Yeah, it looked it obviously a mix-up. I'll say it was Joe because Luke also went to the right to lead block. It looked like Joe may have, uh, may have opened up and stepped uh, to his left, thinking the play was coming to the left. Just got a little bit mixed up there. It's now third and five. Crest back to throw. He's going to try to run, and he'll get the first down across the 40, the 45, and out of bounds near the 47. We know Central coaching staff over there wanting a late hit call and not getting it. But Crest able to scramble for about 12 yards to the 47-yard line and for the second time tonight. Joe Crest able to scramble for a first down. That may be a good thing, though, you know, that he is scrambling for the first down and getting them. You know, that may keep the linebackers and defensive backs back a little bit, uh, keep the linemen aware that he may take off for the ball. It's a good weapon. You know, we saw Joe start to scramble once earlier, make a good decision, and pulled up and passed. Slot formation with Hughes wide right. They're playing very tight on him over there. Give this fake to Shoemaker. Cress on the option, hurdles a man. And... He'll be down at the 48-yard line, pick up about five yards. And when I was coaching last year, I saw a couple penalties called for hurdling the defensive player. Well, a couple of officiating crews said that was a penalty, but no flag there. I think that, on that one, Jeff, it looked like from this angle, I think he jumped over Will Little. Will was walking out there, started to fall down. Joe tried to go around him, and there's no place to go but over top of him. I guess it definitely shouldn't be a penalty if you jump over your own man, right? Second down and five. There's the dive play. This is Kramer, Eric Kramer in the ball game. And he'll get about three yards. Again, they continue to, Jake continues to give the ball to the tailback position. Uh, maybe setting something up later. Uh, we'll wait and see. I'll bring up a third down and about two. But again, the quick dive, good for some positive yards. About three yards on that occasion by Eric Kramer. third and two and Shoemaker off the right side and he'll get a couple yards and have his first down number 30 Jason the fever on the tackle but looks good for the first down the officials stop the clock and it is a first down once again Hughes and Lazier alternating with the plays Ball resting just shy of the 42-yard line, now in Burn Union territory. A little late shifting by the defense there. Maybe a quick count could get some yardage. First down, press back the throw, and unable, unable to find a receiver, and the wall kind of collapsed on him, and Joe will be sacked. About a five-yard loss back to the 48-yard line. Definitely a coverage sack at time, and I also think uh, another problem there was all the patterns were deep patterns. Uh, they say you give you four seconds in a pocket is enough time to pass. I think the patterns took a little bit longer than that to develop. So I'll bring up second down now and long, about second and 15. And Crest back once again to pass under pressure. He'll give it out here for Shoemaker in the flat. He's got some blockers. He'll be across the 40 to about the 39-yard line. 
and he picked up a block or two there and was able to get back to the yards that were lost on the sack, plus about four yards. I don't know if you noticed there on the last defensive lineman they had seven to about seven guys on the line of scrimmage, a middle linebacker and two cornerbacks. Don't be surprised if you see a little tight end pop pass over the middle. Third down and about six. Again, a wide slot formation to the left. Crest back to throw once again. He's going down the middle and it's complete. That's Scott Wilson, number 82, and he'll make the catch down at the 15-yard line. It wasn't exactly the pop pass that you mentioned, but it's a tight end, and you know the result was just fine. They had nobody in the middle of the field, and they run a pattern right down the middle. I didn't know where that ball was going. It floated for a long time, but Scott made a nice catch. Yeah, we're, you know, we're pretty high up on top of the press box. It looked like that ball floated forever, but a completion to Scott Wilson, and the Seminoles in business now at the 15-yard line. There's Shoemaker, and not much going for Luke as he'll be hit. He may get a yard from the last scrimmage of the uh, head to about the 16 to about the 15 now. Uh, uh, pe people may wonder, you know, why are you get why are you running those plays and not gaining any yardage? But that's what that's doing is keeping a defense on us for those dives they've been running the tailback and the pitch sweeps. Right, every play that has run has a purpose and a lot of times it's setting up something for the next play or maybe three or four plays down the road. So second down and nine. We're now inside three minutes remaining before halftime. Here's the option to the right and a fine job of stringing the play out there by the Rocket defense. He'll be brought down by number 53 it looks like, uh, John Davis. And pretty good job defensively by the Rockets. So no gain for Cress on the play, maybe a half a yard loss, and third and nine. The ball just shy of the 15 yard line with two and a half minutes remaining before halftime. Seminoles with a couple of timeouts remaining. A big third down play. And it's a completion. There it is, Greg. That's number 88, Keith Lazier. Right down the middle, obviously, Coach across to see something. They're playing a, I really couldn't tell you what kind of defense, but they're not leaving anybody in the middle. Uh, they're just kind of flooding the middle with a couple of receivers. Joe made a real nice pass. Like I said, up here, it's hard to tell if it's on the line or not, but first uh, down goal. Uh, it is a first down. Burn Union will spend a timeout, so we'll take timeout for this. You're a busy person. You don't have time to drive all over the Ohio Valley to check prices, go back two weeks later to pick up your order, and still not be happy about the quality. The good news is, you don't have to. The Sports Connection is right here with a full line of sports attire, including shirts, shorts, socks, ball hats, and of course, school jackets. Professional and college team clothing is available. We do monogramming, embroidering, silk screening, transfers, and lettering. We outfit any team, any size. Save time and money when you take your custom orders to the Sports Connection connection. Okay, we're back. And Burn Union spending a time out and maybe making that uh, a little bit of adjustment as you pointed out. And is this microphone kind of hooked up down to Coach Singleton and Coach Sherman on the sideline maybe? <laughs> Did you call that last play? Oh, uh, well, just the way they were lined, that was an obvious play. And I think you know some credit probably for that type of call probably goes to Coach Briggs up in the press box able to see that. So it's first and goal from the four-yard line. And Shoemaker, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Luke Shoemaker on the right side behind Boer and Young. And it's a touchdown. And with 2.06 remaining, the Seminoles retake the lead. And I think we'll get a two-point try for the extra point. And that will be the case as Lazier will come in with the play. And we'll get an attempt for two to try to offset the missed extra point after the initial touchdown. But a, an excellent drive to go the length of the field and score and retake the lead. So there's a sweep by Shoemaker toward the corner. And did he get in? No. Boy, that was close. 
but a good job defensively by Byrne Union to stop the extra point. Shoemaker was very close to the end zone, but he did not get in. But nevertheless, 2.06 remaining before halftime. Monroe Central 12, Byrne Union 7. We'll be right back with the last 2.06 of the half. Master's Garage has recently added a new service to their long list of automotive repairs. They're now rebuilding starters, alternators, and generators. And remember, they specialize in custom exhaust work with the Ben Pearson muffler shop, as well as brake work, lube jobs, and oil changes. Master's features a full line of Quaker State products, including oil, filters, lube products, and parts to keep your vehicle in top running condition. Call Master's Garage today at 472-1232. All right, we're back with the kickoff, and Greg, it looked like Luke may have been able to get in the end zone, but it appeared that he may have slipped just a little bit as he tried to cut up field, and he may have lost a little bit of momentum. Yeah, it's definitely. He, he stumbled going out around the end. He got a little closer and tried to dive, and he, when he got airborne, two guys hit him, knocked him back out of, off the line. But a, a nice job with a long drive right after the Burn Union touchdown to drive the length of the field, uh, about 70 yards, and score. Cress's kick high and short and it's going to hit the ground and be picked up about the 25 yard line and he'll get outside and be driven out of bounds and I got a couple of flags over there I think we're going to get a late hit and with two minutes remaining in the half you know you can't afford to give up 15 yards but I think that's the case uh, I believe a late hit out of bounds against the Seminoles and Burn Union is going to put the ball in play probably around the 50 yard line The field's a little bit soft in some spots out there, and when that kickoff hit the ground, it didn't really bounce anywhere. As we've seen, a lot of times that ball bounced kind of crazy. It just stayed right there, and the back was able to pick it up and get up field and then be hit it late out of bounds. So with 159 remaining, Burn Union will have a couple of timeouts, and they'll be in Monroe Central Territory at the 48-yard line. And a crucial for Monroe Central to make a stop and go in at halftime with the lead. Two receivers wide, and they'll give the ball to the tailback once again, and he'll be hit and break a tackle and break another tackle and be driven out of bounds near the 30-yard line by Ludwig, but I believe he stepped out of bounds up near the 38. But we haven't stopped the tailback consistently all night. A very hard runner. <laughs> It's hard to bring a guy down when he keeps his legs moving like he does. So again, the defense may have been looking for some passing, and Burn Union comes right at you with the tailback, and you know, he's about the only guy that's carried the ball tonight. 152 before halftime, and he'll get it on the sweep. And again, he shoots through there pretty quick, and he'll be brought down by Shoemaker. And Hamilton, and very near the first down. Well, I'll take that back. He's not near the first down. He's near the line of scrimmage. And that second down in about or six. About a four-yard pickup. Kind of lost track of the downs marker there for a moment. With the clock running and a pass. And he'll throw it out in the flat here. Number, And he dropped the ball. Um, that's number 22, uh, Dickerson and had the ball in his hands near the first down and the ball slipped through the hands and I think that's the first pass that we've seen tonight by Burn Union. It really surprised me too. Uh, you know, you go back, like you've been saying, he, tailbacks had all the carries. Why not stick with him, especially after that last drive? One sixteen remaining before half. Third and six for Burn Union with the ball at the Seminole 35 yard line. Uh, strong formation to the right. Again, the quarterback drops back, throw it out here in the flat, and it's complete. Out of bounds to number 22, Dickerson. He's shy of the first down as he's out of bounds at the 29-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down and about a yard and a half for the first down. The receiver may have been more concerned with getting out of bounds than he was his first down. I think he and was. That's going to bring up a fourth down. So a big stop on this play and be able to go in at halftime with the lead. Maybe tailback. That's a quarterback sneak, and he'll get through and get the first down at about the 30, or inside the 30, about the 27-yard line. 
just kind of tucked in behind his center and his right guard. And the clock is running, and Burn Union will now spend a timeout with 105 remaining before halftime. They'll have one remaining. Let's step aside with 105 remaining before halftime. 12-7, Monroe Central, and we'll be right back. The F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency was established in 1903. They have three agents and three customer service representatives to give you the kind of service you deserve. Being an independent insurance agency means they represent different companies, allowing them to compare for you. For all of your insurance needs, auto, home, life, bonds, business, or farms, contact F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency at 472-0876. We're back after the Burn Union timeout. They have the ball first and 10 at the Monroe Central 27 yard line, 105 before half. And they'll fake to the tailback and roll out. He's got a receiver on a crossing pattern, complete number 80. That's Blake Ross on a little crossing pattern. Joe Kress on the tackle. And with 57.5 seconds, it's another first down. And Burn Union's in business for the go-ahead touchdown before halftime. The clock now running. That time they used the tailback as a decoy, and it, it worked to perfection. Quarterback rolled to the left, made a nice pass completion first down. Again, the fake to the tailback, and throw for the end zone, and complete for the touchdown. Once again, number 80. They say it's number 90, Tom Moffner, and it's a touchdown for Burn Union with 39.8 seconds remaining before half. Uh, looks like a shootout. Neither defense can stop the other team. And we have a 13-12 lead for Burn Union with the extra point upcoming. Again, number 25, David Fish to attempt the point. And the kick is up and good. So with 39.8 seconds remaining before half, Burn Union 14, Monroe Central 12. We'll be right back with the kickoff. These days it seems like everyone is looking for a bargain. You can spend a lot of time shopping for high quality and low prices, even for gasoline. Redhead in Woodsfield has 100% pure gasoline at low, low prices. While you're there, save on car care products, including oil, fluids, additives, and more. Soft drinks are discounted every day at the Redhead. Stock up on your favorite pop and snacks. Even Fido gets a break with champion dog food at Big Big Savings. So stop at the Redhead today and save. All right, we're back for the kickoff. As we mentioned there while we were on break, each team forced a punt on their initial possession. But since then, neither defense has stopped the other team with each team getting on the board twice. The difference, a pair of successful extra points by the Burn Union place kicker David Fish and Monroe Central unable to convert after either of their touchdowns, thus a 14-12 ball game. So we'll get the kickoff and you know we're not expect anything too fancy out of the Seminoles unless you're able to, to get a nice return on the kick and that's been a good for us all year and the kick is a squibber and he'll hit one of the up back shoes. He'll take the ball and get to about the 35 and be wrestled to the ground at about the 36 yard line. Just inside 32 seconds remaining. I believe the Seminoles have a timeout remaining. The clock is running inside 25 seconds and I'd say Monroe Central will take well. We'll get out in a little spread formation here. We'll see how the defense adjusts to this. A lot of jumping around out there. Snap back to Cress. He'll scramble away from some pressure. And he'll get out of bounds over on the far sideline at about the 43 yard line with 3.4 seconds remaining. A little scouting expedition there to maybe see what the defense would do. <laughs> Like, you know, we've said that before, and probably the craziest play in any football league, that, or that matter. Uh, spread them out a little bit. 
uh, looked to be a pass to Hughes running down the field after he sent the ball, being an eligible receiver at the end of the line. It looked to be well scouted. Saw a similar formation by the Pitt Panthers at a game earlier this year. So Cress will take a knee, and we'll go to the halftime with the score. Burn Union 14, Monroe Central 12. We'll be right back with some of the halftime entertainment. Before winter stops you on your track, stop by Monroe Tire Center, formerly Alt Sales. The same top quality tires and dependable service you've grown to expect. They've just added computerized front end and four wheel alignment service, specializing in front end work including shocks, struts, and brake service. They carry a fine line of Hercules and Summit brand tires and can provide for all your tire needs, new, used, or retreads. They also carry car and truck batteries, as well as custom wheels. For honest, dependable service, call Monroe Tire Center at 472-5188. For fashion and safety, light up your life with L.A. Gear Light Shoes. Other brand names include Nike, Reebok, L.A. Cross, Rubber Boots, Red Wing Steel Toad Sport and Insulated Boots, Soft Spots, Hush Puppies, Naturalizers, Wolverines, and Cliniques. Jeans for the entire family and fall separates for men and women. Take time to see their craft and gift sections. Assignments welcome. Now's a great time to shop Shoe Corner. New fall items arriving daily and great clearance sales too. That's Shoe Corner on Main Street in Woodsfield. Mandatory three minute warm up period. Um, and while they're doing that, Greg, we can talk about a couple of statistics. As we mentioned before the half, uh, both teams punting on their first possession, but then it seems like scoring at will as both teams have tallied twice. Uh, Joe Crest, 65 yards passing, 31 yards running, unofficially for Monroe Central. Uh, Dustin Robinson, uh, 10 carries for 35 yards. Luke Shoemaker, 6 carries for 18 yards. A total of 31 plays from scrimmage. The Burn Union offense has not been real fancy. Uh, unofficially, 19 plays from scrimmage, and 13 of those have been running plays to so their tailback, number 44, uh, Worthman. And there's 13 carries for 92 yards. So you know, I think we need to stop the, the tailback here as Burn Union will put the ball in play to start the third quarter. You know, what may have, the kind of adjustments may have happened at halftime, Coach Sarkosta and Coach Singleton, what may they have talked about to try to stop the tailback? Well, I said, you, you said it right there. That's what they, they have to stop him. Uh, we saw a couple times Luke busting through the middle on a, a blitz and getting a hand on him. But you got to credit uh, Worthman's blockers. They've been getting a piece of Luke and uh, Eric Hamilton. Um, I expect to see basically the same defense, maybe a few more blitzes here and there. Okay. You know, we mentioned the people of our location here tonight. You know, a great place to view the game from. We are out in the open air up atop the press box here at Cambridge. And I look back behind us there at halftime and I see a couple of water puddles back there from the rains during the middle part of the week. Yeah, and you might mention what's happening with those water puddles. <laughs> I don't know if I want to look at them, Jeff. We was back here a little bit ago, and we, somebody was ice skating. That's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, there, there's a thin layer of ice starting to form on the water puddles back there. So it is, in fact, a chilly night, but a dry night and a great night for football. After all, it is November, and it is supposed to be cold in November. Yeah. Well, thank Brother Roger for the stats there in the first half. Thanks, Roger. So we're ready for the second half. Burn Union will return. Since they won the toss to start the game, they deferred. So they now get to put the ball in play and receive the second half kickoff. And you know, as we said, the Seminoles need to step forward and make some defensive plays and make some stops. Both teams moving the ball real well offensively. And you know, if somebody can make a big defensive stand, that may be enough to win the game. So Crest will kick off 14 to 12 is the Burn Union lead as we get ready to start the third period of play. And again, the ball is short. It's going to hit and bounce and be taken by Worthman. And he'll break through a couple tackles and get across the 40 to the 43-yard line before he's finally brought down. And it looks like Jeremy Kramer on the tackle. But whether it be from scrimmage or kick return, this Worthman is a tough ball carrier. So, excellent field position by Burn Union. The Rockets will put the ball in play at their own 43-yard line to start the third period. And 
We'll see if we can pick up any defensive changes to get the backs in the eye. And again, Worthman is the ball carrier through a huge hole on the left side and good for about 10 yards and a first down. Burn Union's offensive line is doing a great job for him. Uh, yeah, running off tackle like that is, it's not hard to block. You just have to execute. Uh, they're beating the Seminoles off of the ball, opening up holes for Worthman. It's easy to see how they have put up some very good offensive numbers. So it is a first down. And Worthman again is stopped and we get a flag. Looks like Jeremy Baker and on the tackle. And a holding penalty against Burn Union. Penalties have been few and far between since the opening possession of the game when Manure Central had a 10-yard uh, holding penalty. And that may be Burn Union's initial penalty of the game. And maybe that's the break that the Seminoles need. If you have trouble making the stops, maybe the penalty can slow things down. Yeah. Maybe we'll keep an eye on uh, here throughout this uh, second half. As far as the holding concern, Coach Costa may have put a bug in one of the referees' ears about the first half. I mean, you never know. Uh, watching for a little more may pick up a few holding calls. So first down and about 18 yards to go for Burn Union. And they'll pass. And they'll get on a deep pattern and intercepted. Dustin Robinson. That was a bad pass by the Burn Union quarterback, R Rowley. Uh, he threw it up for grabs, didn't put any error underneath it again, trying to pick on Dustin. Dustin's a great defensive back. He may be undersized, but he made a nice play on that one. So, in fact, the penalty does change the flow of the game. A long yard situation, Burn Union chooses to pass the ball, and the interception by Robinson. So the first turnover of the game goes in favor of Monroe Central. They'll take over on their own 27-yard line. And Shoemaker, and absolutely nothing off that right side. Somebody stood Luke up and made the play. That may be number 21, Muncie. We hear good things from the Burn Union people about Muncie, the linebacker. And he had some help from number 22, Dickerson, but stood Luke up. And Luke's coming out of the game. There seems to, to be favoring a leg. And he did take a tremendous shot. Again, uh, receivers both side. We have Robinson here to the left. Crest back to throw. He's going to throw, and it's cut. Scott Wilson, number 82, Scott Wilson, and a tremendous job, a great set of hands by Scott on that play, and as we said, the temperature must be around 32 degrees there, so the hands have to be a little cold, and Scott went up in the air and made the catch, and it's good for a first down, and about 20 yards on the play, 21 yards on the, on the pickup, and the Seminoles have a first down near midfield. Robinson going to hit the first down. He's going to run him right down the sideline. 25, 20, 15 out of bounds. Block him at the 16-yard line. Dustin Robinson. A great hole and uses some speed. Yeah, it takes us back to last season, Bellsville game. Uh, keying on Luke, and while Luke was hurt with the wrist injury, Dustin picking up some slack. Boy, he's doing a heck of a job tonight running the ball. Looks like Luke was favoring the ankle as he came out. And he's still over on the sideline with one of the, the trainers from Cambridge uh, looking at him there. We may get a taping of the ankle. So while he is on the sideline, Weddle will be at the fullback. And Kramer will be at the wing back or halfback position. It's first and 10 at the 16 yard line. And Cress pitched to Robinson. On the option, he'll get across the 15. Just inside the 14, a couple of yards on the play, but again, Joe forced awfully deep to make that pitch by the defense. That's a made a nice play that time, even getting eight yards, like you said, it was a deep pitch. Uh, he did have a little room in front of him to work with. Found a little hole and squeezed through it for about a two two yard gain. So second down and eight now with the ball on about the 14 yard line.
with a wing formation and Robinson and they give it on the reverse some running room will get a block out of bounds inside the five that's Scott Wilson he was out behind number 66 Buller and a first down that's a little new wrinkle well we I was talking to Roger here at first half uh, how the floor of their defense you know really a lot of pursuit like we were talking with the options pursuit went the other way to come back with the reverse one block well he almost got in I, I lost the ball for a second there I'm not sure exactly what did happen but I know the result was good a first down to three yard line a power eye formation both ends are in tight Robinson he'll get to maybe the two yard line it'd be interesting to see what happens now because this has been shoemaker territory but with Luke on the sideline getting an ankle taped we'll see what happens the load kind of falls on Dustin's shoulders and every time that has happened as you have said in the past Dustin has stepped forward and has risen to the occasion I see Luke getting his shoe back on down here so we'll get him back in the game but hopefully right after this touchdown wishbone formation Robinson he'll get another yard to about the one He never did go down, but a whole gang of Burn Union people there, including number 21, Muncie, number 31, Jason Arnett. And it'll be third down now, and less than two. Hughes in, lays you out. Once again, wishbone formation. Give it to Robinson. Touchdown! A great job by Dustin Robinson to get into the end zone and the Seminoles retake the lead. It's 18 to 14 with the extra point upcoming. Credit that touchdown to the offensive line, Jeff. They had every member of the Boone Union defense on the line in the end zone. Uh, Fake to Will Rattle first man through, give it to Dustin. Over around the tackle on the right side, punched it in for the touchdown. 7 minutes 14 seconds on the clock once again the Seminoles will line up and go for two Shoemaker back in the game at fullback we need to get a conversion here play fake to Robinson Crest rolls out he's going to spread to the end zone and get there two point conversion Joe Crest great job of getting to the end zone he looked for the receiver, saw the opening, and just got to the corner. Very similar to Luke being stopped on the touchdown in the second quarter. Seven minutes, 14 seconds now remaining in the third period. The Seminoles have retaken the lead. Monroe Central 20, Burn Union 14. Most of us don't spend a lot of time thinking about septic service until we really need it. Sparky Septic Service is there when you need them with liquid waste removal, septic tank cleaning, or portable toilets. Sparky serves Eastern Ohio and the Northern Panhandle. When you need portable toilets for special events, call them at 472-0525. Remember their motto, in our business, a flush beats a full house. Bellwood Drugs is your locally owned full-service discount price drugstore. Call 472-0417 for 24-hour emergency service. We'll be here for you. Delivery and mail-out services are available. We stock wheelchairs, hospital beds, canes, crutches, and other accessories. Retirees, ask Joe or Tom about our hassle-free Aetna prescription service. As a leader chain store, we bring you bargain prices on an assortment of products every month. Don't forget to branch your code of finishing with 24-hour service. Bellwood Drugs, people you know and people you can trust with your health. We're back with the kickoff. Crest's kick high. Once again, it's going to hit about the 15. This time, we'll take a little bit of a crazy bounce. Picked up by Rathman. And again, he's in the open field. And finally, it will not be brought down. And he's going to be gone. Vic Rathman. What a weapon all night. And he's going to return the kickoff about 85 yards for a touchdown, breaking a couple tackles. And we've said before, we haven't stopped him all night. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown. And just like that, Burn Union on the board. And we're tied at 20 with the extra point upcoming. 
Classic case of not wrapping your hands on the tackles there. Three or four guys had a shot of him. Keeps him legs churning, bounces off. Touchdown. The extra point upcoming. Fish to attempt the point. Snaps a little high. But for the third consecutive time, the number 25, David Fish, is good. So just like that, six minutes, 58 seconds remaining in the third period. Burn Union on a kickoff return retakes the lead. Burn Union Rockets 21, Monroe Central 20. You don't have to be in the deep freeze this winter. Hilltop Auto will give you a free cooling system inspection. Don't let your radiator keep you in the cold. Hilltop sells and installs a full line of new radiators as well as gas tanks. Conveniently located one and one half mile east of Woodsfield on State Route 78, Hilltop Auto does major and minor repairs including brakes, CV joints, and tune-ups. So call JR today at 472-5140 or 934-2094. Good luck, Seminoles. I look at the program while we were away during the timeout, and I see Worthman, 5'11", 190 pounds, and he looks bigger, showed some great speed right there, and he's only a junior. You look like you didn't believe me there. You want to double check that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was but, looking there. Yep, 17 years old, junior. But he is a junior, so next year some big things by Byrne Union around him offensively. Robinson will take the kick at about the 15. He'll try to get outside. He'll slip through a small hole. Be brought down about the 33-yard line by number 90, Tom uh, Moffner. So the Seminoles will take over at their own 34-yard line, first and 10, now trailing by a point. But if you like offensive football and scoring, this is the place to be. Something our fans have not seen a lot of this year. We've been used to those defensive struggles and at least, you know, from the Monroe Central end, defensively holding the other team down. If you look at the scores, Burn Union has given up a lot of points. Even though they're 9-1, and one, they've given up over 20 points four different times this year. So they've given up some points. Monroe Central's been able to take advantage of it, but the, the difference so far has been you know, three points to two on, on PAT conversions. Six and a half minutes remaining with the clock running in the third period. Robinson goes in motion. Shoemaker gets the handoff, and he'll work his way forward across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Let's call it nine yards by Luke on first down, and the ankle looks like it's in pretty good shape. Must be a good tape job down there by the uh, trainer from Cambridge who uh, taped the ankle during the last break. That's one thing when you go to the tournaments, playoffs such as this, you know, medical staff is provided by the site in those cases, so a trainer and doctor from Cambridge are here if you need them. And he taped that ankle in a hurry. We get movement across the line. And from here that appeared to be defensive encroachment. This Burn Union starts to walk backwards and that in fact is defensive offside or encroachment. Five yard penalty moved the ball up to the 48 yard line and give Monroe Central a first down. And again, as we said earlier, the penalties have been few and far between and that's what you like to see. The kids done a good job, a good clean game and decided by the plays, not because somebody made a mistake and the official threw a flag. Let's hope that continues. Wishbone formation. And it's Shoemaker, first back through, across midfield about the 49. He's met by three or four Burn Union Rockets. They're about a three-yard pickup for Shoemaker on first down. Seeing a little different strategy as far as offense is concerned. A few new plays thrown in. May come back to Dustin here for too long. Like we mentioned a couple weeks ago, that during the course of the year you have a lot of plays that you work on every week in practice, but never use in a game. And we have seen a couple so far today, and we may see more. There is Robinson. He's across the 45 to 42, 43 yard line. He's very close to first down. From here it appears that he is about a yard or maybe a half a yard short. So 
So we'll bring up a third down and about a yard. Once again, Lazier and Hughes alternating with the plays. Burn Union defense up tight on third and a yard. A lot of people along the line of scrimmage. And Shoemaker, very little running room off the right side, but needed only about a yard. And from here, it appears the spot is good for the first down, and it is. The way the defense is aligned there, you think for too long, they're going to suck him inside with a fake inside. That happened in the first half once we got a nice little gain out of it. Um, and the outside linebacker is crashing down. On this play, we see Eric Kramer replacing Will Weddle. And there's a play fake. Chris going for all downfield and incomplete. Intended receiver was Robinson. And that's the top notch defender that we talked about earlier, number five, Kenny Hurst with 11 interceptions on the year. The defending back there, and the ball just out of Dustin's reach, and it'll go as an incomplete pass, but as you said, you know, keep the running inside, and then you play fake and go for the big play downfield, and that time just did not make connection. Second and 10. Slot formation to the left. Robinson, right side. He'll slide forward for about three yards. Had Kramer out in front there on the trap. But, uh, but uh, very little running room there. It appeared that Dustin may have lost his footing a little bit as he tried to cut up field. So the field is just a little bit soft from the rain uh, Wednesday night and Thursday morning. But otherwise in excellent shape. So third and seven. Ball just inside the 40-yard line. We'll get a wing formation with Robinson to the right. And we'll get a pitch. That's Kramer. And he'll get the first down. <laughs> what a job by Eric Kramer on two plays. And again, like you said, a bad low pitch. Kramer went down, picked it off the grass. Uh, turned up field, twist and turn. And they're saying maybe you don't have the first yeah, down I, now. I may have spoke a little bit too soon. Uh, the Monroe Central crowd, which kind of becomes a PVC and whole Eastern Ohio crowd with all the people from other schools that are here, they voiced the disapproval of that. And it looks like it's just inches. Just inches as the official is going to bring it back to the hash mark. And that will bring up a fourth down and maybe six inches. But the ball at the 32-yard line. And we're going to get one of those big fourth down plays that you hear announcers talk about all the time. <laughs> we'll see what happens here, but I'd say a good bet that the power game uh, looks like maybe off the right side, as that's where the strong wing formation is to the right. Chris will take the ball on the sneak off the left side. He'll tuck in over there behind Yoho and Kramer and the tight end on that side, Hughes, and get about a yard and a half and a first down. Just kind of slide down the line until you felt the hole and then fall forward. That's all he needed to do. So the conversion of first down on the fourth down and inches play keeps the Seminole drive alive with about two and a half minutes remaining in the third period. The Seminoles trailing by one point. You give it to Shoemaker off the right side. And he's forced out of bounds after about three yards. Muncie once again on the tackle for the Rockets. Seems like he's been in on every play tonight. Laser out. Hughes back in with the play. Give Shoemaker three yards to the 27-yard line and second and seven. Wishbone formation. Hughes wide left. Chris on a keeper. 
He has some running room, puts up a couple of blocks. He'll get inside the 20 to about the 18. And that was a design keeper the whole way. No, definitely. They, in wishbone formation. And a flag was thrown. I did not pick that up initially. And right after, and a clipping penalty. A clipping penalty against Monroe Central. So it was a first down carry by Chris. But the flag on about the 22 yard line. And that will hurt. They'll step off 15 yards against the Seminoles. And they'll put the ball back on the 38-yard line. That wasn't exactly 15 yards from where the flag was. It sure looked like it. That may have been closer to 16 or 17 yards, but that must have been the point of the foul. Back to the 38. So second and about 18. And the Seminoles will have to overcome that penalty. Crest will drop to throw. They're setting up a screen. They get over here to Robinson. He'll sidestep one tackler and get out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. A little naked screen on that one. Uh, Luke went to the right. Dustin come to the left. Joe looked it off to the right, come back to Dustin. Uh, didn't have any blockers, but it was designed like that and still made a nice gain out of it. That would be a 13-yard pickup. That'll bring up third and about five. You know, get the yardage back in bits and pieces. You're now down with the two plays in order to get the five yards that you need for the first down. Crest will drop the throw, give you some pressure, and be sacked. Clear back at the 37-yard line, a loss of about 12 yards, and no time at all for Crest to find a receiver. And now bring up fourth down now, and very long. And matter of fact, that looks like that will, will force the first seminal punt since the opening possession of the game, as Hughes drops back into punt formation. He'll stand at midfield. Burn Union with nobody deep. Very high kick. Will hit it about to 12, and roll, and keep rolling inside the five. And now it will be down by a, a about the one yard line by a whole host of Seminoles. That's a gamble you take when you put nobody back guarding against the fake, letting that ball hit and roll on this soft turf, and couldn't be more perfect. 35 yard punt, no return, rolling dead at the one yard line. Big defensive stand this time, Jeff. Towards the end of the third quarter, we need to pick it up a notch right here. I didn't see the ball carry, but I'm guessing it was number 44. Worthman. He's going to get out to near the five-yard line. Kramer and some others there on the tackle. Jeremy Baker also there. We've moved inside 30 seconds remaining in the third period. Burn Union will have to run one more play. They'll pitch it. And the ball carrier is number eight. Joe Roberts, I didn't see the start of the play. But he'll have the first down out to the 15-yard line. I think what they did there, had a wing, wing to the near, uh, uh, near side. Faked a Worthman. Uh, sent the, the wing man in motion out around the tail back and pitched it to him after the fake. And we've reached the end of the third period. And quite a ball game it's been. At the end of three periods, Burn Union 21, Monroe Central 20. Call Swiss Land's Real Name 472-0614 if you're looking for a quiet place in the country. Like this three-bedroom ranch surrounded by a beautiful view. Free gas located just four miles from Woodsfield. Or just listed, this new log home on 30 acres has rustic charm with a huge flat yard, secluded yet close to the state road. If you have property to sell, call us at 472-0614. We take listings on all types of property at Swiss Land's Realty. 
Telephones, radios, fax machines, videos, sound equipment, adapters, and converters of all kinds. Scanners, smoke alarms, tape recorders, televisions, toys, games, VCRs, antennas, batteries, camcorders, and computers are just some of the things you'll find at Day Appliance and Radio Shack. With brand names including Quasar, GE, Realistic, and Memorex, they offer a wide variety of computers with IBM compatibility. For all of your electronic needs, see the vast inventory and stock at Day Appliance. They'll be happy to special order, too. See them today, Day Appliance and Radio Shack. Well, Greg, back to the fourth period, and the time is getting short. The ball carrier. And believe it or not, I think number 21, number 21 Lindsay, was the ball carrier. He'll get a couple of yards. I hesitated there because I was, I was looking for 44 and couldn't find him. Uh, Baker, among others, in on the tackle for Monroe Central. I'm sure they won't stay away from number 44 for long. And he gets the ball on this play. And this time he'll be stacked up. Looked like Jeremy Kramer, Luke Shoemaker, Eric Hamilton. And also Jeremy Baker on the play. And that's something we've not seen a lot of tonight, that Dwarfman being stopped for no gain. Well, I think Samuels know, like you said, uh, beginning of the fourth quarter, they know it's uh, it's now or never. they got to stop the ball, get decent field position off of the punt, put, it, put a score on the board. Burn Union be forced to punt only one time tonight and combine that with the kickoff return for a touchdown. And it's easy to see why they have a one-point lead. Third and eight, the pitch, and a big hit by Shoemaker, and Worthman will bounce off of that, but Shoemaker's hit knocked him off his feet a little bit. He'll get across the 20 to near the 21-yard line, and it will be a fourth down situation. I bet down the sideline you can feel that hit. <laughs> I think Luke got up that time a little bit wild, but it was a big hit, but uh, Worthman is Harder runner he is, you give a big hit like that, you're going to take something in return. A couple of big number 44s meeting head on. The result will be fourth and five. Burn Union plenty for only the second time tonight. A little bit of pressure, it's blocked! It's blocked! Number 78, Jeremy Kramer with the block. The loose ball then recovered by number 66, Biller. And what a play, Jeremy Kramer. Jeremy Kramer got close on the only part of the first half. I must have saw something sent him again. He had a blocker on him, reached around with his left hand, it looked like from here, made a heck of a block. Oh, what a play, Jeremy Kramer. First down, Monroe Central at the 10-yard line. Kramer with the block, Burrow with the recovery. Robinson with the carry, fumbles the football, but gets it right back. A very fortunate bounce. The ball come right back up to Dustin. And uh, did your heart skip a couple beats there? I'll tell you what, give it right back to him. That had been crucial. But fortunately, the ball bounced up. Robinson able to get back on the ball. The result will be a loss of a yard. Second down, and it will be second and goal. Mino Central not able to get a first down as the possession started, and it's the toughest first and ten on the field when it's first and goal. The Seminoles now a second and goal from the 11. And again, the ball's loose, and let's wait and see. I think the Seminoles were able to get back on the ball. Either Cress or J.R. Young able to get back on the ball, but two consecutive fumbles, and what was a very promising situation for Monroe Central now is third and goal from the 11-yard line. Something's not been a problem all year, the loose ball and the fumbles, but two straight plays. Third down, 11. Crest drops straight back. He'll throw. A quick out over here to Robinson. He caught the ball for a touchdown. Unbelievable. What a pass by Joe What a pass and what a catch. That ball had to be in one spot, and Joe put it right there. Harrison kept his eyes on the ball, picked it between two defenders, and went for the to see the ball. Well, tell you. between two defenders. It's an 11-yard touchdown, and the Seminoles are back on top. What a game.
Hey, who said 5'5", 150 pounds was small? So with 8.23 left, the Seminoles back on top. The extra point snap is back, and the kick is low and is blocked. Oh, the extra points. But, nevertheless, Monroe Central has retaken the lead. Eight minutes, 23 seconds remaining. And it's Monroe Central 26, Bone Union 21. At STS Sales, friendly service and customer satisfaction is our goal. We offer engine tune-ups and diagnosis done with the Bayer Automotive Analysis System. Our vast automotive knowledge gives you the best in service for your transmissions, air conditioners, brakes, and brake drums. Get complete engine service, such as valve jobs, cam and bearing installations, and complete engine overhaul. We also pressure check and Magnaflex heads. We stock interstate batteries and specialize in refacing rotors, clutch replacement, and oil changes. For all your automotive needs, call STS Sales. Well, Greg, we're back. The big block punt by Kramer and a big crest to Robinson touchdown. And now with 8.23 left, the defense has done such a great job all year. Must rise to the occasion, and it starts with stopping the kickoff. The last time we kicked off, the return for a touchdown crest will bounce it and be picked up. It won't be picked up, it's still loose. And he picked up by one of the up backs, and Hamilton will make the tackle. Uh, Number 21, Muncie, and the ball kind of laid loose there for a second before Muncie finally picked the ball up. So coverage down to the 33-yard line where Burn Union will take over. 8.15 remaining. And the defense, as I said, who made the stop, which resulted in a blocked punt by Kramer, now must make another stop now that you have the lead. Bobby King on number 44, who has the ball. And he'll get across the 35, and he'll be stopped there by Baker. And Yoho, he'll be across the 35 to about the 36. And it looks like uh, number 71, J.R. Young, out of the game at the moment. Uh, have a little problem with the legs, so you have Yoho in at that tackle position. A little bit of fresh legs in. So second and seven for Burn Union. They'll give the ball to the tailback, Worthman once again. He'll try to get outside, cut back, and be brought down in first down territory by Shoemaker. But it is a first down. First down near midfield. It's called the 48 yard line. And once again, as we've said before, nothing fancy. Tailback, tailback, tailback. And it's a tailback. Worthman once again through a big hole. He has running room in the secondary across the 40. Another first down. And huge, huge holes being opened up with the Burn Union offensive line. Definitely. Their size is taking a toll right now. But this sort of seminal has got to reach down as far as they can. Every ounce of energy they got. Plug them holes up and stop this drive where it's at right now. You cannot afford to give up a touchdown because by the time you get the ball back, time will be a little bit short. So the Seminoles need to make the play. Burn Union now at the Monroe Central 37-yard line. First and 10. Up tight. And there's the full or tailback, excuse me, Rathman once again brought down by Baker and Shoemaker. That's another five yards. Caught six yards on the carry. Down just inside the 32. Second down and a long four. Six minutes and ten seconds remaining in the game. The tailback Worthman once again. Another big hole and another first down. Brought down by Kramer and Baker. But he'll be at the 25-yard line. And another first down for Burn Union. We need another rocket mistake, I yeah. believe, to help things out. Less than six minutes remaining in the game. Burn Union just opened up huge holes and ran the tail back in there. And, and we get it some movement on the right side. 
and it will be a five-yard illegal procedure penalty against Burn Union. Well, that definitely helps things. Like you said, uh, one little mistake. Keep adding them up. Last time we saw a mistake on a penalty by Burn Union, the play call changed with a pass. Robinson made the interception, which resulted in a touchdown. 5.45 remaining in the game, and North Central leading 26-21. The Burn Union threatening first down and now 15 with the ball at the Monroe Central 30 yard line. The play fake, quarterback Rowley has the ball. He's now going to tuck it under and run and get across the 25 yard line, pick up about six or seven yards. Well, like you said, Jeff, on the uh, last possession where they got the procedure call, went to the pass play right away. Uh, again, with the same, basically the same call, coverage was good. Quarterback was still able to scramble for about six. Quarterback rolling out outside the pocket, able to see some running room and get about six yards. Second and nine now, the ball at the 24-yard line. This is the tailback. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down by Shoemaker. Fourthman will fall forward for about a yard to the 23. But Luke, looks like the shoulder's bothering him, the ankle's bothering him. But Luke, he's not going to come out of there. He makes a big play, and that's a third and eight situation now for Burn Union. And with 435 remaining in the game. The Monroe Central fans on their feet. A big defensive play on third down. They give it to the tailback. They're trying to get outside, and he will and get to the 15, the 14-yard line, and that's another first down for Burn Union. He's pulled down by Wilson, but not before he gets a first down. Again, just a simple play where it's directed towards a tackle, left tackle, and all he's doing is picking a hole. He sees the outside. He's busting. He's got decent speed. Uh, blockers out in front. As we said earlier, this young man just a junior. So you might look for his name again next year from Burn Union. But Mayor Central still with the lead. They'll pitch the Worthman. He'll slip and slide and get down to near the 10-yard line. Kept his balance well before he's brought down. He's at the nine-yard line. Kramer and on the tackle. Less than four minutes now. 3:45 remaining. Second down and call it five. They get the ball to Worthman once again. He's hit in the backfield by Hamilton. Brought down then by Shoemaker and Wilson. And it'll be a loss on the play. You wonder what Burn Union's coach was thinking on that one. Uh, they've had success just handing the ball directly to Worthman. That time they faked to the fullback and give to the second man through who was Worthman back in the backfield ways. Gave Hamilton time to break through and make the play. So the loss is back to the 13 yard line, third and nine. Once again, inside three minutes, crowd on their feet, rolling out. Quarterback has room to run. He's going to get down inside the five and touchdown, Burn Union. The quarterback, number four, Rowley, rolling out, unable to find a receiver and able to get in the end zone and a touchdown. And Burn Union retakes the lead with 2.48 remaining. Extra point upcoming. And we're going to get a timeout by Burn Union. So while they talk over this extra point, let's step out for these messages. Since 1954, Downing Monument has been a family tradition. Our memorial counselors are concerned about helping you design the perfect monument. These trained professionals will help you to select a style, color, and design that expresses your feeling with dignity and love. We maintain a staff of craftsmen skilled in the fine arts of monument carving and etching, sculpturing each monument artistically and deeply to endure the passing of years. Rock of Ages offers the strongest guarantee in the industry, a warranty with no end or time limit. Call Gallery Monument today to preserve the memory of your loved ones. We're back. Burn Union has just, just retaken the lead. 
And what a swing of emotions this game has been as the teams have traded touchdowns back and forth. First one team, then the other. Burn Union now on top, and with a one-point lead, they will go for two to try to extend their lead to three. And they'll give it to the tailback, and he's going to be in the end zone. That's Worthman once again, easily into the end zone. And from three yards out, he knew he was going to be hard to stop. So 2.48 on the clock. Burn Union, 29. Monroe Central, 26. And we'll be getting ready for the kickoff. We'll keep it right here. And the way this game has gone, Greg, 2.48 is still a lot of time. Definitely. I mean, we've, we've seen... We've seen better finish than this last year, uh, Marion Pleasant game, driving down to win the ball game. Deja vu. And we might mention here as the as the Rockets prepare to kick off, you know, going for two there to extend their lead to three means that if Luno Central should get down a scoring opportunity to try a field goal, that would only tie the game and send the game to overtime. But hopefully with with timeouts remaining, a good return by Robinson or one of the other deep people, and 248, we can get on the board with a touchdown. And this may be a case of who has the ball last wins. It's definitely been an offensive game for those that like scoring. 29-26, Burn Union. We're ready for the kickoff. Number 25, David Fish, preparing to kick off. And the kick is a line drive. It's going to hit. And Robinson's going to take it about his own 11-yard line. He's going to get across the 25 to about the 28-yard line where he'll be brought down. So the Seminoles, 72 yards away from a go-ahead touchdown. Two minutes and 43 seconds remaining. And the clock is running. Still a lot of time left. No reason to, to change your play calling and do anything different except what has worked thus far this evening. Yeah. Wide receivers right and left. Crest back to throw, and the ball goes out of bounds. He tried to hit Robinson over here on a quick hitch pattern to the right side. Dustin slipped down as the ball was coming, and it will be an incomplete pass. And second and 10, 224 remaining. I had to hesitate for a second there to see what the officials were going to do, whether they were going to call that a forward pass or a lateral. It was a forward pass. So second and ten. Again, receivers wide left and right for the Seminoles. Crest back to throw. He's going deep for Robinson. And the ball is thrown out of bounds, incomplete. Dustin Robinson, the intended receiver. Number five, Kenny Hurst. Defensive back on coverage, but the ball was out of bounds and incomplete. Third and ten. That was that out and up. They run against Belzo last week to get in scoring position for the what well, would have been a tying touchdown if they'd made the extra point. Uh, that time, a little better coverage and out of bounds. So third down and ten. He's going to throw over here for Hughes. Complete for the first down, Dustin Hughes. He's going to be pulled out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. And it's like the defensive secondary really did not honor Dustin Hughes like they didn't think the ball would actually come out to him. I have a big cushion on that side. And I heard during the week that uh, their defense did play deep off the line of scrimmage. Uh, their defensive backs uh, obviously saw something there. Dustin run that out. He usually does a little bit deeper this time for about... 13 yards, first so the, down. So the first down conversion on third and 10. Seminoles at their own 42-yard line. Crest the throw once again. He's going down the middle. Intercepted. And running room to the far side on the return by the number five, Hurst. And he's inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. And as we mentioned earlier, 11 interceptions on the year for the defensive back Hurst and that's number 12 and maybe the first mistake that Joe has made throwing the ball. He's had a great night but that ball was picked off and now with only 1.59 and the clock running, Monroe Central is in deep trouble. 
Yeah, that pass there was probably not a good throw. I really couldn't tell if Dustin was supposed to cut in that time or a miscommunication, but it definitely wasn't thrown to the right spot. Three defenders around, and like you said, number five, Kenny Hurst, stepped in front of the ball, picked it off. The clock running inside 140, and we've got a flag thrown. An illegal substitution penalty is the call. The PA announcer says delay a game, but the signal was for the illegal substitution. That's a five-yard penalty, and I'm not real sure what that what that is. They had 11 people on the field. Well, nonetheless, it's a five-yard penalty against Burn Union. The clock is running now inside one and a half. That's the time remaining in the ball game. Burn Union with a three-point lead. Look for Monroe Central to start using some timeouts after this play. And a huge amount of running room for the tailback. Worthman once again, he's inside the 25, and he's going to have a first down at the 24-yard line. And the defensive players keep backing up and backing up as the, the big Burn Union offensive line and the big running backs just really have taken a toll on the Seminoles so far. I see a couple of Seminoles kind of signaling over the side here that they feel like they're being held, but you know, I don't believe you're going to see a call on that now when you've not had that call all night. We've moved inside a minute. Worthman once again to the 20-yard line. He's brought down by Hamilton and Hughes. Timeout called by Monroe Central with 40 seconds remaining. But at this point in time, there's not a whole lot that we can do. I know the old saying, it's never over until it's over, but Greg, I'm afraid the time is near. Yeah, like you said, Jeff, uh, the size of Burn Union, obviously, uh, you know, taking its toll, they're, they're beating our defensive line off the ball to the punch and having a big running back. The way he runs the ball, he's punishing people. You know, He's just daring people to tackle him. Uh, you know, what else can you do? As, as Coach Acosta said last week after the ball game, defensively, anytime you hold a team like Bellsville to seven points, you should have an opportunity to win. And tonight, anytime you can score 26 points, offensively, you should have the opportunity to win. But uh, a superb offensive a ball club, Burn Union Rockets, and a 29-26 lead. They're going to give the ball to their back, Worthman, once again. And he's going to fight forward to about the 15-yard line, be near another first down. Clock continuing to run with 30 seconds left. And... Minot Central will call a timeout with the clock reading 21.4 seconds remaining. A seminal... A little slow getting up out there. But one of the timeouts is going to be spent by Monroe Central. But with second down, or make it third down in about a yard, the Seminoles can only stop the ball one more time. Well, with the sixth division set up in the state of Ohio, you know, everybody in the playoffs, with the exception of the six teams who are state champions, are going, are going to end with a loss. And unfortunately, it looks like the Monroe Central season will end. And we get a late, we get a flag out there during the timeout. And I think that's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct call on the Monroe Central. And I was not really watching during the timeout there, but uh, Coach Acosta, some words for the officials out there. And again, I, I feel that Coach thinks that there's been some holding going on out there on the line and he just wanted the officials to know that he was a little upset with that. It really makes no difference in the game. And it will be a first down for Burn Union, but uh, one play and it'll be over. The Burn Union will advance and play next week against the winner of the Buckeye Trail Garraway game. The quarterback just takes a knee and the clock's going to run down. And I think that's going to do it. Well, from a fan standpoint, Greg, a great ball game, but a lot of disappointment once again this week on the Monroe Central side. Well, you know, they played a good ball game. Like you said, you scored 29 points. Uh, you should have a chance to win. And we talked earlier about Burn Union. 
getting scored on. But when you got a high-powered offense as they do, you know your defense can give up a few touchdowns, like we've seen. Every time they, every time we score, they score. Looks like one of the players went ahead and called a timeout with just 1.8 seconds on the clock. I didn't see a signal for a timeout from the, the sideline, but we do have a stoppage of play with 1.8 seconds remaining. Um, still, a 9-2 and two season, nothing to be ashamed of. Unofficially, the back, Worthman, 29 carries for 188 yards for Byrne Union, plus an 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. But I was going to mention, you know, the first year of existence for Monroe Central, a 9-2 and two season, nothing to be ashamed of. Nine wins will go down as a school record, obviously, and a target for teams to shoot for next year and years in the future. So we'll get one more stoppage, uh, one more snap here, and that will do it. And the quarterback, Rowley, goes down. We're going to get a flag, so hang on for one second. And you hate to see this happening here and illegal procedure for a false start against Burn Union and what had been a very clean football game in the fourth quarter has had some penalties called so Burn Union will have to take one more snap This is like the game that would never end. Yeah. And unfortunately for Monroe Central, it is going to end with the Seminoles on the short end by three points. And the quarterback, Rowley, takes a snap, a knee, and that will do it from Cambridge High School. And disappointment for the Seminoles as Burn Union will advance in an excellent ball game. The final score, 29 to 26 in favor of Burn Union and unfortunately that will do it for us um, Greg anything you want to add you know, to the season you know as we said earlier they're a great season you know, it was a very very good season you know the kids a lot of credit to them for sticking it out and being the first year and everything uh, all the pressure they went through last year to come out 9 and 2 like you said you know you can't fault them for that but you know an excellent football game from the stands from the, from the fans point of view but you know disappointment for all the Monroe Central fans so the final score is 26 22 and you know, stay tuned next Thursday night we will have a coach's corner on Thursday night at 10 o'clock uh, kind of a wrap up to the season and coach Sacosta you know talking about this game and the season in general so keep that in mind next Thursday night 10 o'clock our usual coach's corner That'll about do it from here at Cambridge High School, where the final score tonight, Burn Union Rockets 29, Monroe Central Seminoles 26. You know, for Greg Shoemaker, Brian Easterling, Dale Eddy, Joanne Palmer, and everybody else that's helped us this year, this is Jeff Stevens saying good night.